We have an awesome community here at St. Joseph Parish and we have been worshiping since 1850. Our parish here at St. Joseph uh, has 1,200 families as part of our register and um, since I've been here at this parish I have met a wonderful diverse amount of people um, who have been enthusiastic about their faith. We do have a good number of men and women involved in our St. Vincent de Paul Society uh, that truly is a treasure for our local community and providing services uh, for those who might be struggling, especially during this pandemic. Uh, we have a wonderful Knights of Columbus organization and their countless uh, fundraising and volunteering efforts in the community. I couldn't be more proud as a pastor of all of our volunteers, all of our organizations, and the love that they have for the gospel and wanting to share that with other people's lives. It's very important to our local community to be a presence here uh, in the Dallastown Red Line area and the surrounding areas, uh, especially during this time of the pandemic, uh, the desire for people uh, to find their anchor in Christ. We've tried uh, to, again, uh, as you mentioned, uh, live streaming our capabilities for our masses. Uh, it's a work in progress for our parish. We've had some snafus here and there, um, but also to try to increase our presence with our, our Facebook page. And uh, I've been trying to put out videos from time to time to reach the people. Uh, I think during this pandemic, we just have to be adaptive with how we uh, proclaim the gospel, realizing that some of our brothers and sisters and rightfully so, are choosing to stay home for health reasons. And so uh, they want that interaction with their own parish church. Uh, it's one thing to be able to watch a mass on EWTN or watch the cathedral parish mass, but there is a connection when people can see their own pastor, their own physical church, their own people in the church uh, that feels like they are still worshiping even if they cannot be present in person. My name is Brian Ness. I've been a parishioner here since 1982. I got married in this parish. Uh, my wife uh, actually went to school here when she was a little girl. Uh, ninth grade, she went to Dallas Town instead of St. or York Catholic, or I would have never met her. And uh, this May, we'll be celebrating our 39th wedding anniversary. And I am a convert. Uh, ten year, last year was my 10th anniversary. It took me uh, 28 years to convert, but uh, I wish I would have done it 28 years sooner. And since converting, the things I do now for the church 10 years ago, I told you you were crazy because I'm an extraordinary minister. I sing in the choir at my Knights of Columbus, fourth degree Knights of Columbus, collection counter, uh, greeter at the door. I just just something about the parish. I just love the interaction with the people. We have a great parish here, Dalton. Well, it was, it was always something missing, if you can understand that. I came to church, I did everything except got the communion. And it was, that was always missing. And in uh, 19, what would it have been? It was just time, you know, it was just, I don't know if the Holy Spirit pushed me, said, Brian, it's, you know, it's time for you to step up, so. I did, and like I said, it was the best thing I ever did. I wish I would have done it 28 years sooner. We raised our boys Catholic, just for raising them and bringing them here uh, religiously, because mom said so, you know, one of them deals. And uh, But I just, we always came February all the time. And uh, yeah, with the parish, and then as soon as I, I converted to Knights of Columbus, I got involved with that, and that's a great organization here. We have a great group of guys that are dedicated to the parish. Last year was our first year we hadn't done in about five years. We did 40 cans for Lent for Emmanuel's Closet. Uh, we averaged about over 3,000 pounds of food from our, the school and the parishioners brought in uh, each weekend. Uh, we uh, paint over in the school when they were redoing the school. We used to paint in the rooms and things like that. Uh, we've done blood drives here. We miss all of that this year. This year we missed everything. St. Michael's Guard, I'm a member of St. Michael's Guard also. And uh, we really miss that. We have a group of uh, eight members here, eight, eight 
and we're all we're all actually Knights of Columbus, but we're all St. Michael's Guard also. And that group of guys really miss the interaction of going and serving. We really do. I just think the love we have for each other. You know, we care. We when someone gets sick, it doesn't take long for we to get around that. Hey, we need prayers for for this person or that person, and uh, it's. Uh, when, when we weren't having mass, we were going bonkers at home, you know, because we weren't getting to interact with our, with our brothers and sisters. So and that, was a, that was a big deal for my wife and I, because we, you almost need it, you know, you, you feed off of it and it's, uh, it's just, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but uh, it's just, we have a good group of people here, a very good nucleus of people. and. Uh, Probably like all parishers, there's the same group that always shows up to do the work and things like that. I'm sure every parish has that, but the group we have is outstanding. Well, actually, St. Joseph is my confirmation name. I chose him because he was a worker and uh, a father. I'm a big, big fan of Father Larry Richards, and he wants, on my mirror at home I have, uh, I am third, God is first, Everybody else is second, and I'm third. So that's what I live by. Hello, my name is Pat Germate, and I have been a member of this church for 58 years. And I, like Brian, am not a cradle Catholic. I was born and raised in a Methodist home, and we were very religious. We went to church all the time. But when I met my husband, and we were going to get married, his religion really meant a lot to him. And I made up my mind then that I didn't want my husband and children coming to a different church than I was going to be going. Well, I started coming to church with him and I loved it. I loved the organization of it. It wasn't, it, it, was, it was not just haphazard and I loved all that. I started out as a Eucharistic minister. Also, when the women, way back when, when the women were just, I was one of the first women. And um, we got to the point in this church that we had no music. There was no music. For a while, there was a guitar player. And I, would sit up here and it was killing me because I knew I, I could play the piano and the organ and I thought, what should I do? <laughs> so I decided, I, my profession is nursing. So I worked full time and I had three children. So it was real hard to work that all in, but I still felt we had a need and we started and we started with one or two people. And as I grew in the ministry, the people, the choir that Brian is so much a part of, it's the most wonderful group of people I've ever met. In my, I've been doing this for, I think, about 24 years. And that group of people are so, they're just wonderful. It's like he said, everybody is just willing to give their time and talents. And 90% of those people do not read a note of music. But let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is in that choir loft. And there are beautiful sounds that come out of there because nobody is a prima donna that thinks they have to out sing the other person. So they sing together. And the rest of the church, we are a big family. I mean, it's just like, like Brian said, we, we just love each other and really look out for each other. Uh, my husband and I were the second couple to be married in this new church. So when I was going through my instructions, this church was being built. And we had a wonderful pastor. His name was Father Garrity. And each week when I'd show up, there was no RCIA or anything then. You, you had a one-on-one -on -one experience with them. 
and I'd find out what went on that week and what they ordered and what they were doing and it was a whole lot of fun so I feel like I was in on the groundwork of the church. For our parish and our patron saint of St. Joseph um, means a lot for us and especially for this year of St. Joseph that Pope Francis has dedicated to him. Um, it, it gives a special meaning to us, uh, especially after the difficult 2020 year that we've been through.